The brain's capacity to reorganize itself as it learns is one of the reasons for its amazing capability. Researchers have now developed electrical circuits that can do the same function. Attempts to recreate the brain in silicon, a field known as neuromorphic computing, have a long history, with large investments from computer behemoths such as Intel and IBM. Most research has so far concentrated on recreating the functionality and connection of biological neurons and synapses in the goal of replicating the brain's amazing learning efficiency. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you what scientists believe could be the future of artificial intelligence and a direct path to what some others may consider to be artificial general intelligence. The ability of neurons to restructure themselves in response to experience is one aspect that has gotten less attention. This strong capacity enables the brain to adapt both its structure and function as it learns, optimizing its underlying hardware to new obstacles as they arise. However, a team led by Purdue University researchers has revealed novel circuit components whose functionalities may be altered using basic electronic pulses. As a result, they can flip between operating as resistors, memory capacitors, artificial neurons, and artificial synapses with ease. The discovery paves the way for the development of dynamic neural networks and hardware that, like the brain, can remodel themselves as they learn. The new gadgets, which were disclosed in Science last week, are constructed of a substance called perovskite nicolate, whose electrical characteristics can be adjusted by adding hydrogen ions at certain spots in its lattice-like structure. The researchers discovered that particular hydrogen eye arrangements may generate conductivity patterns that resembled a number of different electrical components. More crucially, they discovered that by applying varying voltages of electrical pulses, they could shuffle about the sites of these hydrogen ions. This enables the device to switch from one configuration to another on the fly, allowing the same device to take on the characteristics of a diverse set of electrical building blocks. In addition, the gadgets are quite stable. The study found that the hydrogen atoms remained in place for at least six months with no loss of resistance, and that the switching behavior remained reliable even after millions of cycles. Furthermore, the devices may be produced using normal chip manufacturing methods. Following the testing of individual devices, the researchers utilized their data to develop simulations of vast networks of them. They utilized the simulations to build reservoir computing, a type of machine learning that uses similar concepts to neural networks. In both digit identification and heartbeat classification tests, they demonstrated that these networks outperformed existing theoretical and experimental models. They also utilized these networks to develop a grow when necessary GWR neural network, which produces and prunes neurons and connections based on the job assigned to it. These networks were compared to a similar type of self-organizing network with a set number of neurons. Most modern hardware is built on the von Neumann architecture, which separates memory and computation. Because von Neumann processors must shuttle information back and forth between memory and CPU, they waste both time, computations are slowed by the speed of the bus between the compute and memory, and energy, an issue known as the von Neumann bottleneck. Chip makers have long been able to increase the amount of processing power on a chip by packing more transistors onto these von Neumann computers, thanks to Moore's law. However, the issues with decreasing transistors much more, their energy consumption, and the heat they emit imply that without a change in chip foundations, that won't be possible for much longer. When they tested the networks on an incremental learning task, where the number of data classes the model had to classify increased over time, they discovered that the dynamic network was more than 200% more accurate than a static network using the same number of neurons as the GWR network at its peak. They also demonstrated that GWR networks could expand and decrease in response to the magnitude of the issue, maximizing their efficiency in ways that static networks could not. Despite these outstanding capabilities, the technology nevertheless confronts considerable challenges. Rohit Abraham John of Zurich points out in an accompanying viewpoint piece that figuring out how to reconfigure connections amongst these devices when they flip between roles is a significant issue. However, the technique may have uses other than brain-inspired computing. According to John, the ability to generate a wide range of electrical components from the same material might be a substantial simplification when compared to existing chip-making techniques. For compute-intensive operations, edge devices like as smartphones must now delegate processing to a cloud-based system, 
which executes the query and returns the result to the device. That question wouldn't have to be sent back and forth with neuromorphic systems, it could be answered within the device itself. Current AI is mainly rules-based, educated on datasets until it learns to deliver a certain conclusion. However, that is not how the human brain works. Our gray matter is considerably more at ease with ambiguity and plasticity. It is envisaged that the next generation of artificial intelligence will be able to cope with a few more brain-like challenges, such as constraint fulfillment, in which a system must discover the best solution to a problem with many constraints. True North, IBM's own neuromorphic technology, was unveiled in 2014 and was last observed with 64 million neurons and 16 billion synapses. While IBM has been rather quiet about True North's progress, it did recently announce a collaboration with the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory to build Blue Raven, a neuromorphic supercomputer. While the lab is currently researching applications for the technology, one possibility is to develop smarter, lighter, and less energy-demanding drones. True North, IBM's proprietary neuromorphic technology, was first seen in 2014, with 64 million neurons and 16 billion synapses. While IBM has been rather quiet about True North's progress, the company did recently announce a cooperation with the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory to construct Blue Raven, a neuromorphic supercomputer. While the group is presently investigating uses for the technology, one option is the development of smarter, lighter, and less energy-demanding drones. The transition from von Neumann to neuromorphic computing will not be without significant hurdles. Computing conventions, such as how data is encoded and handled, have all evolved around the von Neumann paradigm and will need to be revised for a world where neuromorphic computing is increasingly prevalent. Consider visual input. Traditional systems interpret data as a sequence of discrete frames, but a neuromorphic processor would encode it as changes in a visual field over time. The move from von Neumann to neuromorphic computing will be fraught with difficulties. Computing norms, such as data encoding and handling, have all evolved around the von Neumann paradigm and will need to be updated for a future where neuromorphic computing is becoming more common. Consider visual input. Standard systems perceive it as a series of discrete frames, but a neuromorphic processor encodes it as changes in a visual field over time. One unintended consequence of the growing momentum behind neuromorphic computing is that it is likely to improve neuroscience. As researchers attempt to recreate our gray matter in electronics, they may learn more about the brain's inner workings, which will help biologists learn more about the brain. Similarly, as we understand more about the human brain, additional opportunities for neuromorphic computing researchers are expected to emerge. Glial cells, the brain's support cells, for example, do not figure prominently in most neuromorphic designs, but as more information about how these cells are involved in information processing becomes available, computer scientists are beginning to consider whether they should be included in neuromorphic designs as well. While the study is still in its early stages, the researchers claim they are currently looking at ways to combine these devices to make large-scale chips. A silicon brain that can reorganize itself in the same manner that ours can may not be that far away. So, what is your opinion on this very innovative approach to chip making that's directly mimicking the way our human brains work by rewiring itself to improve its learning abilities? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.